you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you dislike it, please tell me why so I can improve. I'm going to talk today about what difference between living things and non-living things. It isn't a hard and fast barrier because the non-living things also do some of the things that living things do and so forth. But it is a sort of general guide and you also have to remember that just because something's a plant or a bacterium doesn't make it any less alive and it does all of these things just in a different way. There are basically seven characteristics. In no particular order, I'm going to start with eating, nutrition. One of the characteristics of living things is that they derive energy from substances which they use to keep their bodies running. And in the case of animals, that energy has to be acquired from other sources. Ultimately, the sources of the producers, which are plants on the whole, which produce their own food from the energy of the sun using chlorophyll, which is why they're green. This is, in fact, an example of the second example, uh, second characteristic of living things, which is it's a slice of a fruit, a cucumber, which is the second characteristic reproduction. The second characteristic of living things, or a second characteristic, is that they reproduce their kind. And there are more individuals of the same organism. I've done that with Holly and Daniel. They are my offspring, so they're going to carry on the um, line, as it were. And other things do that. Of course, there are some species, and I think this is quite significant for human beings. There are some species, the majority of whose members are sterile. For example, ants. This is because they're social animals, and they spread the um, genes by supporting a few individuals that reproduce. Um, I think we could look at ourselves in that way. There's one reason why homosexuality is not against nature, because those homosexuals will still be making a contribution to society. So that's interesting from a biological point of view. There is no biological reason why homosexuality shouldn't exist among social animals. The third characteristic is respiration. Now respiration is not breathing. Breathing is getting oxygen into your body and carbon dioxide out of your body. I'm using my intercostals too much there, hold on. Um, but what we're doing there is supplying oxygen to our bloodstream so that it can then be used to release energy from food and keep the body running. And also excreting which is the fourth characteristic, which exists in the form of carbon dioxide in that case. But of course there is another example of excretion, which means we're going to move to a better lit room now to talk about that. The thing that you associate most with excretion is urine. And I'm not going to produce that on the screen because I think that will probably be a good way of getting me banned. There it is. Uh, we produce that by filtering it out of our blood with our kidneys. Other organisms also produce their own waste, often nitrogenous, such as uric acid, which you've seen on this channel, ammonia, which is fairly harmless and has the advantage of diffusing easily into the air. It's a bit strange that land animals produce urine because it is a real waste of water where we could be producing uric acid or ammonia. I don't really know why, why we do that, but we do, and yes, that's another characteristic. What else have we got? Growth. Yes. Um, obviously I can't sit here and film myself growing partly because I've stopped growing, but that is an example of growth. I have to shave that off every morning along with other parts of my body. And obviously this is a clear example of growth. It's coming out my head, drops off, lives about three years, then keeps dropping off and so it keeps at the length it is. Hopefully won't suffer too much from telogen effluvium. I think I'm going to stay down here actually. Movement. Okay, movement's another one. Um, that may not be apparent with plants, but in fact they do move not just through growing, but through opening and closing during day and night, and moving their leaves around in sleep movements, which are like sort of flapping up and down gradually during the day, and uh, following the sun, that kind of thing. They just do it fairly slowly on the whole, although microscopic plants tend to move quite fast. Mimosa, obviously, does move very fast, and animals generally tend to move faster than plants, although not always, for example, sponges they're moving microscopically. There's also sensation. You're seeing this, light is being produced by the screen you're watching it on. 
and going into your eyes where it elicits some kind of response and your brain interprets it as some middle-aged annoying hairy bloke talking at you. Plants are sensa have sensations as well. They grow upwards away from the force of gravity. They grow towards the light. They seek light if they're in the dark, which is what happens with lettuce and, uh, let and celery, for example, which is why they're so watery. Possibly also cucumbers. I'm not sure how cucumbers are grown. So what have we got then? We have reproduction, feeding, nutrition that is, excretion, respiration, movement. There's always one I forget sensation and that's it so yeah that's that's what there are if you look at living thing then that's what you find it's not a sort of all or nothing thing when you drop a rock it moves um crystals grow photoelectric effect for example that would happen in nature or minerals those are the seven characteristics of living things and they apply to everything not just animals plants as well it's just they're not necessarily as obvious with plants bye